Hi, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs Lecture 1, Knowledge Representation with Graphs. In this section of the lecture we are going to talk about graphs and triples that we can use for knowledge representation. Look at the following example. I guess most of you will know that guy called Spock and you might know Spock is a character from Star Trek and of course the actor who was playing that fictional character was named Leonard Nimoy. So Leonard Nimoy played Spock and Leonard Nimoy therefore also starred in Star Trek. So these are plain and simple information, statements of information that we want to represent. How can we do that? In a sentence, so in a natural language, usually you have subject, predicate and object. You say Leonard Nimoy, which is the subject, played, that's the predicate, Spock. That's the object. This is the very simplest form of a sentence and also it's kind of a, it's called triple. So that's the basic of knowledge representation that you have these kind of triples. You have two things, the subject and the object, and they are related with each other by a predicate and this forms a triple. And as you see here, this gives way to a rather intuitive knowledge representation in terms of graphs. While you interpret the subject and the object as nodes or vertices, so Leonard Nimoy is a node and Spock is a node. And what you do, you simply draw here an edge between the two of them and you get then in the end Leonard Nimoy played Spock and you have a graph representation of that simple sentence of that simple triple. So now we have to formally define what is a graph. We need a specific kind of graph because we have seen that the edges that we have between the nodes, they have a direction. They always lead from the subject to the object. So it's a directed graph. And also these edges, they are associated with a label. So played in that sense, so Leonard Nimoy played Spock, that was a label. So we have a directed edge label, graph G, which consists of three sets, V, E and L. And V is the set of nodes or vertices. V usually has, of course, a specific number of elements of nodes, so let's call it N. And we have a set L of edge labels and we have a set E of directed edges. While E is a subset of V times L times V, which means we have each edge, E sub I, which consists of three components. We have VK, LJ and V sub L. Why? This is an ordered triple of two vertices, V sub K, that's the start node, and V sub L, that's the end node. They are all both element of V and we have an edge label L sub J, which is of course an element of the set of edge labels. Okay, let's apply this to our original example. We had of course Leonard Nimoy played Spock, Leonard Nimoy starred in Star Trek and Spock was a character in Star Trek. So we have put down this here as a small graph representation and now let's see how this definition fits for our graph. We have the set of nodes V here. So we have here as a node, we have here Leonard Nimoy, we have Star Trek and we have Spock as nodes that fits quite well. We have the edge labels as you see here, plate, start in and character in. And then we have the edges, the first one that you see here, Leonard Nimoy played Spock. Leonard Nimoy starred in Star Trek and Spock is a character in Star Trek. So that fits very well. So this is the formal definition of our graph here. Okay, let's continue. What do these nodes represent? Usually these nodes represent entities. What is an entity? An entity is a thing of distinct and independent existence. So these are things we can talk about. We can make statements about. That's an entity. And usually entities are connected to each other via relations. So what's a relation? A relation describes how entities are related to one another. And now let N be a set of entities and then a relation R is defined as being a subset of N times N. So that's quite easy. So that's uh, a relation. So again here nodes represent entities and edges represent relations. But of course that's only the fundament. We want to 
we want to represent even more information, more knowledge. Let's look at the following two sentences. Okay, we can say Leonard Nimoy was born on March 26, 1931, and he passed away on February 27, 2015. So how do we represent that? Of course, now we have different kind of s objects in these sentences. And the question here is, is a date here, is this really an entity? Does this has have an existence of its own, or is it simply a data point? And for that, we introduce a new notion, which is called a literal. And literals here describe data values that do not have a separate existence. Of course, now, philosophically, you might, of course, now argue that a date might have an existence of its own, and we can make statements about a date. Of course, that's true. But take it as a given thing that we have something like, let's say, data types, which might be date, which might be also, let's say, a simple plain number as an integer, which might be associated with a measure or something like that. And these are literals that we want to talk about. These are distinguished from, let's say, clear entities. And we have also here a special kind of vertex or a special kind of node for these literals. And you see it's simply drawn in a box so that we can distinguish this then also in our graph. Further refinement. We can say, for example, what is Spock? Spock is a fictional character and Leonard Nimoy is a person. Now, of course, we have to think of um, individuals versus aggregation because a person, that's kind of a concept, of course. So there might be many different persons. So besides Leonard Nimoy, I'm also a person. And this makes person, again, something special, as well as fictional character. These are so-called classes. They aggregate individuals. So classes are collections of individuals or objects, and they can be defined either by an extension. So that means I specify all of the single class members of a class when I define a class, or by intention. Intention means I specify class constraints. So for example, a fictional character is a character that does not have an existence in the real world. So that might be a fictional character and that's a constraint that I put on the notion of character to define a fictional character. So we have now entities, relations, we have classes, and there is more. So classes are special kind of entities. Look at the next example. Leonard Nimoy played Spock from 1965 to 2013. Hmm. Okay, we have already here um, Leonard Nimoy played Spock. So that's already here in our diagram. How do we then denote that, of course, this has a time constraint. So Leonard Nimoy played Spock exactly from 1965 to 2013. So we would have to make an assumption about a statement. The statement would be here, Leonard Nimoy played Spock, and the assumption is that it has a start date and an end date. And the start date is 1965, and the end date is 2013. If you go on with that concept, you end up in something which is called a property graph. What is a property graph? In a property graph, you can put properties to nodes or also two relations in the following way. So here, for example, you have individuals like Leonard Nimoy and you put on their property information like the birth date and the death date. Next thing, as you see here in the notes, if you look closer at the notes here, it's not simply Leonard Nimoy. You have there a colon and then there is Leonard Nimoy colon person. And you have here Spock colon fictional character. This is for so-called property graphs, the way how you represent individuals together with their class information. So which class does the individual belong to? So this is put there right into the node for the so-called property graphs. And as a third component, what you have there are relations. So there you simply put exactly on the relation that is instantiated between two nodes, between two entities, further property information so that exactly this property is valid from a specific start date until a specific end date from 1965 to 2013. So this is a property graph and property graphs are already rather powerful. But the only semantics that is really given in a formal way here is the semantics of 
entities, of relations, of classes that you see here, and nothing more. So we do not exactly know what a start date means. We do not exactly know what a person is. And we do not exactly know what the relation character in really means. For that, we would need more. And how to do that? This is then something where we come into the realm of so-called knowledge graphs, which will be the subject of the next part of this lecture.